The limited edition grenade shirt is now available in black and white as a permanent addition to my merchandise shop. Available on shirts and hoodies right now. The link in the description down below. Hey guys, me like big boom here. And today we received an amazing teaser of the new upcoming Germany map showing us all kinds of unique locations and buildings and vehicles and the release date all in one one minute trailer. So much going on today. This this video is meant to break down that trailer frame by frame showing every new item, vehicle, and building in the trailer. Lots to go through, but before I get into the breakdown, I'd recommend watching the original trailer. It's in the description down below and will also be in the card in the top right of your screen. Be sure to watch that so you at least have a little bit of a baseline as to what we're covering here. With that out of the way, let's get into the first scene of the teaser. Now, the first scene immediately fades into a sweeping shot of a German highway or autobahn that cuts through a valley between two large hills. A landslide seemingly occurred, dropping boulders down onto the road and on top of some cars. Some things worth noting here are the new road stripes. I mean, this is in Germany, so the roads have been made to look the part. The new redwood trees, which are looking awesome, and new foliage. You'll notice that this time we have green grass on brown dirt to create some contrast and some branches and logs are now a part of the foliage, so they're scattered around just like how grass and pebbles and flowers are on previous maps. Now moving on to the next shot, we see an amazing rickety old wooden train bridge spanning across a gap in the mountainside with a derailed train hanging perilously off the edge. Uh, down on the ground, you can see more of those branches and logs as a part of the foliage, and as the camera pans up, you can see the tunnel that the train came out of, and there's actually another one of those wooden bridges spanning from that tunnel to the pile of the boulders on the other side. Now actually looking up at the top of the mountain you can truly get an idea of the size of this thing. I mean really looking way up at the top you can see the tops of some snowy pine trees so we'll be able to walk up there and actually be a part of the snowy biome in the same map. That's crazy and it's gonna take quite a while to walk all the way up there. That's pretty cool. We haven't had a map that has like a blend between snowy and temperate climates aside from the abandoned Canada map so this is pretty sweet. The next shot is of a campground and a trailer park. Very cool looking. Notable things include the German flag out front and the four new trailer park homes all uniquely sized and colored uh, and then we have the cool little balcony hanging over the cliffside. Pretty sweet stuff. In the background you can really see the size of these mountains. I mean that's one of the main takeaways that I got from the scene here. I mean even the mountain way in the back beyond the render distance is almost peaking above the camera's frame. It's going to be so exciting exploring all these mountains and possibly building bases atop them. That would be so cool. Now, lastly, it's a little blurry with it being so far away, but I think that location in front of the mountain is one of the space shuttle launch locations, but I'm not entirely sure. We will actually see more in the upcoming scenes. Now, moving on, we see an incredible set of waterfall lakes similar to the ones on Hawaii, dropping down three levels of water. These are taking advantage of the new waterfall objects that were added a few weeks ago, as well as the new water volumes in the dev kit level editor. Now, over to the right, we can see a smidge of what appears to be a farm, and we'll see more of that in three, two, one, and here we are at that farm, or, or at least I, I think so. Now, this is a unique looking farm that has a fancy villa out front with greenhouses in the back. We haven't had greenhouses before. Uh, inside the greenhouses, there's some deep green plants, and then there's also some crops growing out in the open field. Now, as the camera pans forward, we can see a fancy looking barn and a shack in the back next to those silos. Basically, everything you see in this shot is a new object, aside from the furniture and the silos. It's pretty sweet. Now, the next shot is of a residential town by the water with docks extending into the river. Now, there doesn't appear to be anything new here, but this does seem like a pretty good location to find boats. I mean, there's a boat right there at the middle dock. Moving on to the next scene, this is a pretty cool one. Uh, I think this once was a wine tasting event before, you know, the zombies happened. I mean, it's a covered area with chairs and tables. There's a barrel to the right, counters, and then a wine bottle rack to the left. Now, looking more into this, you'll notice that the ground is awfully similar to the farm that we had seen earlier, which makes me think that the farm we saw earlier is in fact a vineyard instead of a farm. If that's the case, then I think this isn't a barn. It's probably a storage area for wine barrels, but regardless, it's all pretty cool looking. 
The next scene is our first look at a military location. This is an airport with two hangars and a German flag out front, though there isn't much else to this scene aside from that. Moving on, we get to see an awesome looking prison, the biggest we've had in Unturned thus far. You can see the barbed wire fences surrounding the whole place with a heavy duty gate at the entrance, a police car and a SWAT van, four watchtowers with spotlights that will hopefully be powerable, and a courtyard in the middle. Now I'd imagine this is going to be a pretty big hotspot considering you'll be able to find SWAT vans here as well as police weapons. Now as the teaser plays on, we get to see the inside of this location as policemen escort a prison to their cell. Some things worth noting are the new cell doors. They are sliding doors instead of swing doors now, and judging by the prisoner already inside of one, I'd imagine that these are powerable and openable, so that's going to be pretty cool for roleplay. Now, the policeman is also holding an AA-12, so perhaps those spawn in this location, and if that's the case, trips to the prison on PvP servers are going to be risky and will require preparation. Now this next shot is of the bottom of a dam, which is awesome. We have never had a dam in Unturned before, so it's nice to see some new major locations added. Now I've been trying to figure out what is inside this building that's attached to the dam. I think they are generators, but I'm not entirely sure. Regardless, there's a transmission tower out front to carry the electricity, and we get to see the famous washing machine landing to the right. It's been in every official map in Unturned, so here it is in Germany. That's pretty funny. Up at the top of the dam, we can see that there is a road that crosses over the top with a military checkpoint set up. Now, depending on this dam's location, this might actually be a pretty great location to loot for guns without getting too bothered by other players. Now this dam must have failed at some point because the next shot is of a flooded city, another unique location for Unturned and a pretty exciting one at that. Now almost all the buildings in this town are taking on water and will require you to dive underneath the surface to loot locations like this police station. That's pretty awesome. The next scene doesn't show much, but it has the camera entering an entrance of an underground bunker drilled into the side of a mountain. That in itself is pretty exciting, though unfortunately it doesn't show us the inside of it. Though later in the trailer we do see some underground scenes and that may be the inside of this location. Regardless, moving on we get to see our first glimpse of players actually playing on the map, this time driving boats and jet skis down the river and underneath a bridge, very cool. They also seem to be driving past a relatively major location, you'll notice that this bridge leads into a town with large apartments and commercial buildings. Keep this in mind, we will see this later. Now the next scene is of the players exploring an underground location, possibly a part of that entrance that we saw earlier. As they go deeper into the cave, they start exploring a sewer system, tossing red flares as they go. Pretty crazy, I mean that's going to be an, an exciting location to explore. Moving on, we see those players driving a Coalition Ural, a unique vehicle, into what appears to be a Coalition base. Now, I don't exactly want to jump to conclusions and say that the map will have NPCs at launch and, you know, have a full set of quests to complete. I mean, it does look like there are NPCs up in the windows to the left and the right, but as the camera moves to the other side, you'll see that they move from their positions over to the balconies, so that kind of shows that they're players and not NPCs, but I mean, judging by how clean this location looks and how fancy the whole thing is, it has to be a safe zone of sorts. I mean, whether the NPCs will be available at launch or they'll be added later, this is probably where they are going to be. The next shot is a dark one, sweeping across what appears to be a tank factory at first, but judging by the small conveyor belts and big press, it's not. And as we see more shots, we quickly learn that this is the granite quarry that we saw in the teaser from earlier. The conveyor belts lead out of the building and into the open, and the next scene shows us dump trucks driving up the ramps, running over a zombie like it's made of paper. It's so cool! I mean, these dump trucks are huge, which means that this granite quarry has to be even more huge. It's, it's gonna be super exciting to explore this place, and not only that, but you'll be able to find dump trucks, spotlights, generators, blowtorches, jackhammers, all kinds of similar useful items in these kinds of locations, so this will be very cool. After this, we move back to the Coalition base, showing the road leading up to the entrance. Very cool. This time, however, the doors are destroyed, which means it's probably the entrance on the other side of the base. Regardless, we don't actually get to see too much of this, which is kind of unfortunate. Now moving on, we start the sequence of shots showing the biggest and most jam-packed area of the map. This is the center 
of a large city. This takes up over the course of five shots and there is a lot to cover in here. In this first shot, the camera is panning away from a flaming crater of objects that I mean, after looking at it closer, it uh, seems to be a big pile of body bags, I think. I'm pretty sure. I think they're bags of dead zombies, which would explain the fences around it and the quarantine signs. And I think they're just burning all the dead zombies so that they can get rid of them in a relatively safe manner. Uh, and as the camera pans out more, this starts to make more sense. Uh, it shows a truck with a trailer flipped over and the crates dropped off the freeway, but that's kind of irrelevant. As it pans further away, you can see that this is actually in a coalition base on the inside of this city. I mean, look at all this. There's tons of coalition tents. Very cool looking. Uh, they've got car lifts and gas tanks in the back. There's a huge raised freeway just running straight through the middle of this city with exits and on ramps leading up to it. Uh, over to the right, there's like these pedestrian bridges leading over the streets. There's a construction site out back, a medical tent down below. Overall, just a huge, super busy city to explore. This is going to be a big hot spot. I mean, just just like Moscow on Russia or Seattle on Washington. Very cool. Now, lastly, as the camera pans out, we can see the river in the back. Now that is the river that the players were boating and jet skiing across from earlier. Remember that when they were going underneath the bridge? That bridge is in fact the freeway that we see here. Very cool. And we're only seeing just a section of this city. You'll notice that the next shot is on the other side of the freeway looking in the opposite direction showing how far the city extends in that direction. I mean it looks like there's mostly residential buildings in that area but it does show us just how huge this city is. And then also this angle also shows us to the left there's a huge wall that the coalition set up i think they're trying to block off this whole area and where at least where the tents are it all just kind of reminds me of world war z a little bit it's it's really really cool now the next scene is a closer shot of the medical area of the coalition area fenced off with quarantine signs and then wham a big shot of the whole city from above absolutely insane here we can see the coalition tents and medical area and we can also see the four walls that they set up blocking the main roads. Overall, just an incredible location. It's going to be very cool exploring all of this from down below. Now, the next scene is taking place in a castle of all locations. This is so cool. This is like an actual medieval looking castle, which would be a perfect place to have a huge battle, right? So here is a tank approaching the location, exchanging fire. And then the next shot is of the inside of the castle with a hind exchanging fire. Just crazy stuff happening in this castle here. Unfortunately, it's kind of dark, so we don't get to see much of it, though we will see a brighter shot of this castle from above uh, later in the teaser. The next scene is also dark, but of a burning city, as we got to see in Nelson's tweet from a few weeks ago. All the buildings are in rubble, but there's a lot of military stuff scattered around, and judging by the green glow coming from the zombies, we can assume that this is both a dead zone and will contain very good loot. Because of this, the next scene is of the players attacking this burning location, shooting all the zombies, uh, but unfortunately we don't actually get to see much more of this. Regardless, it's all going to be pretty awesome. Now this next shot is by far one of the coolest and most unique, it is my favorite, showing three fighter jets taking off from a runway embedded in the side of a mountain. Just fighter jets coming out of a mountain, it's so cool. I mean, look at this, there's these huge walls that can close and open uh, the runway if needed and the jets just fly straight out the side and out into the open showing a beautiful landscape with a road winding through the valley. Just, oh, it is so cool. As we're reaching the end of the video, we get to see a few more quick shots of new locations, this time showing a small military base or training camp with a shooting range and helicopter pad. Uh, this will be a pretty cool location to quickly loot for military equipment and possibly a helicopter. Awesome stuff there. Now the next shot is of an underground silo with a space shuttle inside. Like. This is getting crazy. We've got the castle, we've got the runway in a mountain, we've got the burning city, the dam, underwater city, just crazy stuff. And to add on top of that, we have this underground silo with the space shuttle inside. Now we got to see this object from a few weeks ago, but this time it's all set up. Now keep this in mind. This is a shuttle underground and ready for launch. The next shot 
is of a different shuttle positioned above ground and ready for launch. So these are two separate locations. We will have an underground space shuttle and an above ground space shuttle. This above ground one is in a military base, so you could find some guns here, but regarding the two different shuttles, I'm not sure if they're in the same place because the underground shuttle could be behind that wall there or if they're completely separate. But regardless, it's very cool. This is another place worth immediately checking out. Now as we're wrapping up here, we can see a daytime shot of that incredible castle that we saw earlier, truly giving you an idea of the size of the building and also in the back, you can see that shuttle launch site from the scene before. Very cool. Also, considering the size of those windows and how that can kind of give you an idea of the size of a player, so you know, you got those windows there, player is about the size of those windows, just comparing that to the size of the castle and then the size of the castle compared to the mountain in the back really does give you an idea of the size of this map and the size of these mountains and just the amount of verticality in this map. It's, it's so cool. I'm very, very excited. There's going to be so much stuff to explore. Lastly, to wrap up the teaser, we can see all the players together underneath the covered wine tasting area by the fire, revealing that this update, 3.20, is releasing on July 7th, 2017. That is in seven days. That's next Friday. This is going to be so cool. I mean, this hype train is on full blast. This map is going to be absolutely incredible with so many unique locations and landscapes. It's also been confirmed that the map will also have new vehicles for us to find and drive around. There's just so much going on. It's insane. I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed, but also exciting. That was a teaser video broken down frame by frame. Hopefully I was able to cover everything and help you catch something new that you may have missed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and do all that, Jabush, because we like big boom. Peace out. <laughs>